Hi guys, and uh, welcome to this tutorial for 2D character animation in Flash. I'm Tyler Kupfer, and doing this tutorial for Base14.com. So, what I'm going to show you today is how to make a 2D animated character that's made up of symbols, something like this. This is a character that I did uh, for a movie I'm working on called Duck Heart Tessa Coil. And if we burrow inside this symbol, you'll see that what it really is is a whole bunch of layers, and every layer has a piece, a, uh, a part of the body on it. And so what we can do is we can go through and uh, every part of that body can be tweened and, uh, and changed how we want it in various key positions to create a, uh, a character animation. So this is what you call uh, 2D rigging. I'm going to show you the basic setup of how to do that. So come back to our, our main document here. I'm going to run through some real quick uh, basics for you here. Um, I really want to point out that you need to make sure that you're thinking about the size of your, uh, of your document. So make sure that uh, it matches whatever you want. If this were a movie, I'd make it 128 uh, wide by 804 tall because that's my, uh, my full HD resolution. That's how I'm making my movies. And then also make sure that your frame rate's at something you want, either 30 frames per second or 24 frames per second. The default is 12 frames per second in Flash. And while that suits uh, hand-drawn animation, it's really not going to look good with tweened animation. So let's go ahead and get that character made. So here we are in Illustrator, and uh, here's where we're going to grab our character model. Um, you can draw whatever you want. I recommend doing it in Illustrator because Flash really is designed for drawing things uh, on a pure basis. So bring it back to Flash, select our main layer, and we're going to paste it right in there. Now it's going to give us a preference box. It's going to ask us for some settings, and whatever it gives you should be the, uh, the best default. So just make sure that you tell it that you want to keep the recommended uh, Adobe Illustrator settings and that uh, you apply the recommended settings. Uh, we don't have to worry about maintaining layers. So here's our character. We've got it uh, made up here. What it's made up of right now are a bunch of uh, paths and bitmaps that we've got here. So these are all shadows that it applied. And then the rest of it are all paths. So we need to take all of this and convert it into a bunch of symbols. And I'll show you why that's so useful later. So. We'll start at the bottom here and just work our way through. I also want to point out at this time that when you're converting something to a symbol, make sure that it's a graphic and not a movie clip or a button. Because uh, what movie clips do is they have their own independent, they move independently of the timelines and, and they can give you very strange and, and unpredictable results. And buttons are just that, they're supposed to be clickable buttons. So a graphic is what you want to use when you want pure, hard driven, predictable, and manageable animation. You can hit F8 to convert anything to a symbol. So I'm, I give everything a pretty straightforward name. So uh, leg one, I'm going to duplicate that and replace the other leg with it because they're both the same sort of looking leg. It works pretty well. Okay. And then the wing, wing one. I uh, give the wing shadow a name. Just go through and name everything. And what this is going to allow us to do is to eventually create this rigged character the way that we want it to work. As you might have guessed, we will duplicate the I here. We don't need to make an I1 and an I2. Try to get pretty close. Uh, for the beak, I'm just going to group the beak and the beak shadow together just to keep things simple here. As well as the tuft of hair, I'm going to group those together as one symbol. All right, do we get everything? Uh, looks good to me. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to toss all of these into a body parts folder that will allow us to keep everything more organized. And uh, and what we can do now is we need to get everything uh, in the right uh, order. So you notice that the wing is is too far back right now. I need to bring it forward. Need to bring shadow down a little, and I can see that. Need to bring the uh, the head to the front so that it is on top of the body. And then I also need to make sure the legs are in the back. Cool. 
that's just a little bit of arrangement there. Now that we've got everything made in symbols, it's all wrapped by a blue box, I'm ready to convert it into one big symbol. So I give this a name of whatever it's going to do. So in this animation, he's going to turn his head. So I name it Duck Turns Head. So now this is what I call an action. You know, it's a graphic symbol that represents a uh, the character doing something. And it's made up of body parts. Now we've got everything here on one layer, but here's the best part is if, uh, if we've got all these symbols made and they're all named appropriately, you can go to Modify Timeline Distribute to Layers. And what that'll do is it'll make all these nice layers for us and uh, make a big time saver for us because now everything's been distributed conveniently to layers. We've got the legs at the bottom, the body, the wings on top, the, ne the neck, the head, the eyes, the beak, and the tuft on top. And I like to keep this in a uh, downward order so that it corresponds, the layer order corresponds to the actual layout of the character. So here's where the fun begins. What we can start doing now is bringing these keyframes out. And um, since this all since all the different parts are on different layers, we can create new keyframes for every single piece and every single point. So if I do select an entire column and I hit the F6 key, it'll create this whole row or this whole column of new keyframes for me. So what I do is I consider each of these new row, these columns of keyframes a, uh, a extreme or a, uh, a key pose. So right now his three key poses are all the same, but I can change this key pose so that say I wanted his head to rotate, I hit the Q button and um, I can go ahead and rotate the head. Now when I tween from one to the next, it'll let me rotate the head like that. Now these down here aren't changing, so you're not really seeing them move very much. But then if I if I want them to move, I can come to this key pose, make sure that I'm on these two keyframes, and move it how I want. And uh, since that tween's already applied, it will uh, tween them as necessary. Now this is also how I get the three-dimensional head movement. For example, if I come to this third key pose, and say I just want his head to look like it's rotating, I'll move his face over here and uh, rotate that and maybe rotate his head a little bit and then I can go ahead and create more tweens based on that and I'll actually only tween the parts that I actually move and so there you have his head rotating in uh, what really appears to be a pseudo 3D kind of fashion. Uh, later on we can get into easing and, uh, and other ways to make it look more realistic but, uh, but that's the general synopsis of how to create a successful beginning rig. Now what I would like to do is to come back uh, to the timeline here and the way I keep things organized is that I name the, uh, the timeline with whatever the character happens to be and then let's pretend this isn't here right now. Uh, if I have my whole timeline stretched out and I'm ready to put a character on the stage I can just find the action that I want and I drag it onto the timeline. Now when I watch this on the main timeline, it'll show that character moving. He's repeating the action right now because the graphic is set to loop. If I set it to play once, then he'll only execute that action once. And so what I can do eventually, as you might guess, is I can animate many, many, many of these actions and, uh, and then turn them into a full timeline. So that's how what I've got here, as you can see. I've got several different actions all described, and as I scrub across the timeline, all of those actions execute. It's a good way to keep it all organized. Well, I'm out of time for this tutorial, but I, I hope you found it useful, and hopefully we can we can cover some more advanced properties uh, in the next one. Thanks for watching.